am joined by another great voice in American leadership, a Democrat and an independent, a former senator and former candidate for vice president of the United States, and a consistent, strong voice who will never tire until this regime falls. Joe Lieberman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear friend and former colleague, Bob Torricelli. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to greet you as my fellow Americans, right here in pursuit of a, Amer a very American goal, which is freedom for the people of Iran. I want to say to you today, though probably the weather forecasters would say it's partly cloudy, that when it comes to the cause of freedom in Iran, the sun is shining brighter than ever before. Now, why do I say that? Well, the first thing is, we had an election here in America last November. And as President Obama always says, elections have consequences. I, I don't agree with President Trump on every policy or every statement or even every Twitter tweet he's ever made. But when it comes to Iran, the change from the last administration to this one is a change from night to day, from darkness to sunlight, from illusion to reality and realism. <laughs> President Trump made that clear throughout the campaign last year, but really what's important is that he, he made it clear throughout his presidency, eight months of it, 220 some odd days, and never clearer than the extraordinary speech he gave right here to the United Nations yesterday. President, unlike the last administration, which felt that if it signed that nuclear agreement with Iran, Iran would change, become more moderate. Was that realistic? No. You are absolutely right. And the fact is, in the year, and almost two years since the agreement was implemented, nothing about the atrocious aggressive extremist behavior of Iran has changed. President Trump sees that and speaks to it. He also knows and has said clearly what we have felt, I certainly have, which is that the agreement that was negotiated was a terrible agreement. It was not good for the United States. It was not good for the people of Iran. It was not good for the world. And yesterday, he gave us hope to believe, the President did. What I think when we met here last year at this time, we never would have imagined was possible that the President of the United States may well soon decertify Iran, essentially pulling the United States out of this bad agreement. And that is an incredibly positive turn of uh, events. Okay, the other thing that has happened is the allies that have come to our cause, and I thought it was most dramatically expressed uh, in the meeting in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. President Trump was there, but more than 50 Arab nations stating uh, more clearly than ever before in a more unified voice that the current regime in Iran not only represents a threat to the people of Iran, it represents a threat to the entire region and to the world. We are not alone. We are not alone in fighting for freedom for Iran. We have some great countries who are in the same region who are willing to stand up 
with us and say it's time to change the regime in Iran. Change, change is right. Now I want to come back to something I said a little bit earlier. I think one of the hopes, and it was really a naive hope, of the last administration was what I said, that if they, if they could convince Iran to sign the nuclear agreement, Iran's behavior would change. Well, I don't know how they felt that, because the Supreme Leader Khamenei was saying right during the negotiations that nothing would change, and unfortunately kept his word. Iran, the regime, still the number one state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, still uh, b called by Amnesty uh, International, one of the worst violators of human rights, wantonly jailing journalists, political opponents, uh, bloggers, and killing people who are opponents, kill, uh, uh, carrying out more executions than any other country in the world. So I think it's not us but it's the regime in Iran that is saying to us, we will not change. We will never change. And therefore, we have to say, with increasing support, I believe, certainly here in the United States, and from nations throughout the Middle East, and I hope the rest of the world, if the regime in Iran will not change, and I know it won't, then we must change the regime. Change, change, change. Regime change in Iran. 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 Are, are, are we ready? Are the people of Iran ready for freedom? You, you bet they are. Change, change, change. Thank you. Regime change in Iran. Change, change, change. change. Regime change in Iran. Change, change, change. Regime change in Iran. Change, change, change. Regime change in Iran. really to the people of the world that it's time for a truth commission about what happened to those 30,000 human beings killed by the Iranian government in the late 80s. It's time for a truth commission in Iran the way there was a truth commission in South Africa after the end of apartheid. So there is the beginning of a protest movement, and it's not in its infancy anymore. It's expanding. There are different ideological groups, different ethnic groups, and in my opinion, by far, the most organized and effective. <laughs> So I hope that President Trump will move on from his eloquence yesterday and not only decertify Iran, followed hopefully by Congress, with your help, reinstituting economic sanctions against Iran, but that we will do what we did during the dark years for the people of Eastern and Central Europe who had to live under the tyranny of the communists, and that is in Iran, to support the opposition groups, to support the freedom fighters, to support the people's Mujahideen of Iran and all others who are our allies in Iran against our enemies who control the country. Are we ready for that? <laughs> Yes.
they are. So I have spoken to you from facts. There's been no fake news in what I've had to say today. And the facts give us reason to feel that history is moving in our direction, which means the direction of freedom for the people of Iran. But we can't stop now. We can't stop now and we won't stop now. If I may paraphrase a great saying by Dr. Martin Luther King this way, the political arc of the universe sometimes bends slowly, but it always bends toward freedom. And you and I know that that doesn't happen automatically. It requires people who believe to bend the arc, people who are courageous in Iran and outside to support the cause of freedom and the overthrow of the extreme repressive regime there. So, but I have a dream that we will gather one day soon, not just to appeal for freedom in Iran, but we will gather in Tehran to celebrate the freedom of Iran with your help and God's help. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. Free, free, free Iran. Free, free.